Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news comes from Birmingham this afternoon, where crews are on the scene of a home explosion. That story does stop our news here at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasami. Emergency crews responded to the explosion about two hours ago. The house is located on the 1300 block of Taffin, right near Woodward, as you can see here on this map. Let's get out to our Grant Herms. He's been on the scene since the news broke. And Grant, uh, I think everybody's wondering, was anyone hurt in this explosion? Evrod, thankfully, there was only one person inside this home, and she suffered very, very minor injuries. I'm going to show you the front of the house. You know, the homeowner didn't want to go on camera. She is still a little shaken up from this explosion, but she says she escaped through the side window. I'm going to walk you around here so you can see all of this destruction that happened. The house itself didn't so much explode all the way as it did just balloon up and knock the brick off. So as we come around the corner here, you can see the woman escaped through this side window here just behind that candle. I can see all the brick on the ground there. Now, some the video we shot a little earlier this morning with fire crews. They're still here on scene along with natural gas crews who were here a little earlier. This explosion is being investigated as an accidental gas explosion. Consumers Energy recently told us that there was no indication of a leak on the outside of the house. The woman inside said she had been out of her home for several weeks taking care of her father in Three Rivers. She said she came back today to get her cats and plug in a timer light to ward off would-be burglars while she was away. And when she flipped on one of those lights inside, she said she felt a rush of air and then held her breath and climbed out the window because you realized there had been an explosion. And for those of you worried about those animals, those cats made it out of the house safely and they are hiding in the back of the garage right now. The homeowner said she didn't smell any gas or anything like that. She says she has some seasonal allergies and maybe possibly made her unaware of the smell, but you can smell it here in wafts and drifts on scene. And so far, they are still investigating this as some kind of gas leak explosion. In Birmingham, Grant Herms, local before. Well, we're certainly glad that that woman is going to be okay. Developing right now, a police officer in Toledo is still in the hospital after being shot in Monroe. We want to show you some video from the scene on Sunday night. Dixie Highway was closed as dozens of police officers investigated, and they say that the incident started with a very violent carjacking where a woman was assaulted. Let's get out to our Victor Williams. He joins us now live. You were on the scene last night when the story broke. Back there today, I understand you have new information, Victor. Yeah, that's right, Evra. We now know the name of the officer that was shot in the line of duty as she was doing a traffic stop. She's been identified as Corporal Renee Peterson, and she's been with the force for 16 years. The officer is fighting for her life after she was shot twice in the lower torso right below her bulletproof vest. At this point, she's been listed in critical condition, yet stable. This all happened following a carjacking where two men allegedly pistol whipped a woman with a handgun, stealing her car near East 2nd and Winchester. After seeing that car a short time later, a traffic stop was made on Dixie Highway, and that's when the corporal was shot and eventually transferred to the hospital in Toledo. So far, she's had several surgeries, yet Captain John Wall says she has a lot more to go. You know, things won't, might not be the same with her. And that, that, that's sad, and that's a reality of the profession that we have. She's gone through a couple of surgeries already and is looking to uh, have to go through some more to, to repair the, the, her injuries. We hope that, uh, that it looks good and that she continues to heal and recover and that she's in the, the hands of the doctors who know what they're doing, and, and we can hopefully get her back uh, soon. And the entire investigation has been handed over to Michigan State Police, so we are waiting for any type of information on the two men who are accused of doing this to this officer. But this is not the first officer that this has happened to in the past couple of months. We'll actually have more information on that coming up tonight at 5. In the meantime, we are reporting live from Monroe. Victor Williams, Local 4. Victor, thank you for the update. President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump visited the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier this morning. This was to commemorate Memorial Day. Although the wreath laying is usually a part of a ceremony that involves a presidential address, Mr. Trump did not deliver a speech at the Arlington National Cemetery, which is closed to the public because of the coronavirus pandemic. The wreath laying lasted about five minutes. Mr. Trump walked up to the wreath and stood silently before it, as you just saw there, then reached out, briefly placed his hand on the wreath and saluted. Right now, though, we want to go live, live to pictures from Fort McHenry in Baltimore, and that's where the president is attending a Memorial Day ceremony there. 
Baltimore is still under a stay at home order and the city's mayor had asked Mr. Trump not to come, saying that the president pursuing non essential travel sends the wrong message. He went on to say that the president's trip would require expensive personnel and equipment that will burden the city financially. A bit closer to home now, Metro Detroiters gathered in Plymouth and Canton to honor those who have died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. We started in Plymouth. Officials there decided to have a socially distanced parade and wreath laying, and it all happened just a few hours ago. The parade went mobile, winding through neighborhoods, streets, and residents were able to watch from their front porches and their front yards on, on a main street. Organizers say canceling the event wasn't really an option. That's the easy answer, but that's not the Plymouth way. The Plymouth way is to make sure that we're out here and, and support our veterans. Before the parade, a wreath laying ceremony took place at the city's Veterans Memorial Park. And not too far away in Canton, a group of Metro Detroiters, uh, Marines there took time to honor the fallen. They gathered at the 1st Battalion, 24th Marines Iraq War Memorial. And despite the COVID-19 and lockdown order, they say that it's important to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And speaking of honoring the fallen, our losses are greater than any illustration or description. But the New York Times tried to honor those who died after battling the coronavirus by de dedicating Sunday's front page and three inside pages to the names of about 1,000 victims. The result, a front page that didn't have any pictures, news articles, ads, or anything else, just those names. The entire page filled with the names of those who lost their lives under a headline that says, U.S. deaths near 100,000, an incalculable loss. The nationwide death toll is expected to reach the milestone number of 100,000 people in the coming days. And we actually counted, we counted 18 Michigan residents on that list. One of them was this woman. She's 47-year-old Lanika Barksdale. She was known here in Detroit as a ballroom dancing queen of Detroit. And we got a chance to speak with her brother, who says that not being able to be there for his sister was painful. We couldn't be close to her. We couldn't visit her. Um, and she was just there alone. And that's really, to me and to many of my family members, that was the hardest part. And we can only imagine. The family held a balloon release on Saturday. This was to celebrate Lenika's birthday, which was on Friday. And right now, we do want to keep you updated on the very latest on COVID-19 here in our state of Michigan. Here's a breakdown of our current count. Michigan official, officials have reported five new COVID-19 deaths on just Sunday afternoon, but that is the lowest single day number of deaths since March 23rd. And in total, we've lost more than 5,200 people to the coronavirus, but more than 33,000 people have recovered. There are 314 new confirmed coronavirus cases that were reported on Sunday. The state of Michigan is now inching towards the 55,000 case mark. But new updates have been coming mid afternoon, so we're going to bring those to you the moment that we get them on clickondetroit.com and on our mobile app. Well, we do want to switch gears a bit and take a look at our holiday forecast with Brandon as we look live now through our outside sky cam. Brandon Roo standing by. We were talking this morning about how it is t-shirt weather. I see you've got on a button down and some sunglasses. Very needed as we are at right around 80 degrees this afternoon. Yeah, and the sun makes all the difference in the world, Evrod. At times it feels very pleasant out and then the sun busts out and it's almost dare I say, a little uncomfortable. But yeah, 80 in Pontiac, 78 at Ann Arbor, where we have that live camera, 79 in Metro. And you can see the high on the gold bar down there, the heat index. It feels a couple of degrees warmer, certainly, than the air is telling us. It's going to be humid, as you can already feel. But that continues today, tomorrow, Wednesday, very warm and muggy, and we see low to middle 80s, maybe even a little bit warmer. It's going to be near record heat today. Make sure you're hydrated using that sunscreen. Out on the lakes, I think we're going to be okay. The water temps are cool, 50 to 55 on the big lakes, but a foot or less on the chop. So a few isolated pop-ups with the heat of the afternoon, and we'll take a closer look at that. It's a pattern today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and today's the holiday, Evrod, so we want to make sure everybody's A-OK. -okay. Coming up. Well, we certainly appreciate that, Brandon. Thank you. So to come, the World Health Organization has named South America the, quote, new epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic. We'll tell you what the White House is doing to keep new cases from being brought into the already hard hit United States.
But now at noon, we do continue to follow breaking news out of Birmingham. That's where crews are on the scene of a house explosion, and you are looking live at the aftermath. This is the scene on Chapman Avenue right near 14 and Woodward. Investigators say that there was one woman inside when that house exploded. Luckily, she was not hurt. But you want to stick with us here at Local 4 and click on Detroit.com for more updates. We're back after this.